Eagle Heights Cathedral, welcome to today's Sunday celebration service. We are so excited that you've chosen to start off the new year right with us in the house of God. I wanna remind you that you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and also visit our website, ehconline.org to stay up to date on our upcoming events for the new year. Now join us as Bishop Collins begins a new, timely and powerful message. Good morning, Eagle Heights Cathedral. Let's stand to our feet. I know it's freezing cold outside, but there's nothing that warms you up more than getting moving, clapping your hands, throwing up your voice, and praising the Lord. Amen? Oh, I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, I will.
Thank you, Lord, giving me victory. You are mighty. You're mighty. Victorious. Victorious. You're all powerful. All powerful. And glorious. And glorious. Said you're mighty. You're mighty. Victorious. Victorious. You're all powerful. All powerful. And glorious. And glorious. Said you're mighty. You're mighty. You're victorious. Victorious. You're whole. Every year this happens, right after the holidays, people go into an energy lull where you gotta drag them out for worship, you gotta drag them out for service, you gotta drag yourself out to go to work. But we serve a God that doesn't have to drag himself out to do anything. He's already arrived and he's already taking care of every situation. Some of y'all are in some difficult positions right now, but our God is a God that has the power to change your circumstance in one moment. And the reason why I always keep praising is because I stand and believe that I'm one praise away from my miracle. I am one worship away from my victory. So I can't afford to leave my praise at home. I can't afford to leave my worship by my bedside. I have to take it with me everywhere I go and just say, because of who you are, I give you glory. And because of who you are, I give you praise. And because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. If you never done another thing, Lord, I worship you because of who you are, because of who you are, yeah. Because of who you are, I give you glory. 
will give you all the glory because of who you are i give you praise your praise is forever on my lips because of who you are i will lift my voice
now one in whom there is none like you. We need to hear from you. Give us ears that hear, eyes that see. For Lord, you said, let the church hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Speak to me, through me. And may the word do what you've promised it would do. Not return void, but change us. And my prayer is that it will draw us nearer, my God, to thee. So we fully comprehend there is none like you. And we need no one else but you. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Proverbs 24, beginning at verse 23. Proverbs 24, verse 23 through 34. These also are sayings of the wise. To show partiality in judging is not good. Whoever says the, to the guilty, you are innocent, will be cursed by peoples and denounced by nations. But it will go well with those who convict the guilty, and rich blessing will come to them. An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. Do not testify against your neighbor without cause. Would you use your lips to mislead? Do not say, I'll do to them as they have done to me. I'll pay them back for what they did. I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. Proverbs 6, verses 4 through 10 says something similar. Let me read it. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like the bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in the summer and gathers its feed at the harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come to you like a thief and scarcity, like an armed man. God, add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There was a young missionary named Herbert Jackson, and he was given a car for his work. The car was a major asset, but it had one difficulty in that it had to be jump-started every time he drove it. So Jackson devised a system, devised a system to cope with the car's inability to start. When he was ready to leave home, he went to a nearby school, and he asked permission to bring some children out of a class and help him push start his car. Throughout the day, he would be careful to always park on the hill or to leave the engine running when he stopped for short visits. For two years, the young missionary used what he believed was an ingenious method to enable him to use the car. When poor health forced the Jackson family to leave the mission field, a new missionary arrived to lead the mission. And when Jackson explained his, mesin, his method for starting the car, the young man opened up the hood and he began inspecting. And then he interrupted and said, why, Dr. Jackson, I believe the only trouble is the loose cable. He gave that, couple, that cable a twist. He pushed the switch. And the engine roared to life. For two years, Dr. Jackson had used his own devices and endured needless trouble. Listen very closely. The power to start the car was there all the time. It only needed to be connected. As we continue in this series of messages, welcome Holy Spirit. I know that you draw the correlation this morning. We, the body of Christ as a whole, for the last 30 to 40 years, and hear what I'm saying, and I, and I know this is right, for the last 30 to 40 years, have resorted to using our own devices and have endured unnecessary trouble. So much turbulence and lost so many battles, not because God is not able. So much turbulence, because not because God is not wanting to give us great victories and show us his wonders in the earth. But it is that as a whole, the body of Christ, we have disconnected from the very avenue through which our power and our authority flows. And I'm talking about the precious Holy Spirit of the living God. Whether it be through faulty teaching that says God no longer does miracles, that the Holy Spirit doesn't work that way anymore, or that we are in a period of grace now in the body of Christ so we don't need the Holy Spirit. 
Whatever the case may be, our problem is that we have disconnected from the Holy Spirit. And here is the danger, dangerous place that we find ourselves in in this hour in the church. The story is told of a man who was putting a tin roof on his barn when all of a sudden he slipped and he began to slide down that roof. He cried out to God to save him when no sooner than he got the words out of his mouth, a nail caught his pants and stopped him. When he stopped, he said, never mind, God, I took care of it. That sounds like many in the church today, many Christians, many who serve him. We have an unspoken attitude in the body of Christ that we make life happen, that we cause our lives to be blessed. And pastors, we make ministry happen. And we call our church my church. And we call the people my people. And when it's God's church and it's God's people that he has entrusted to our care. And it's not any longer that God doesn't perform miracles. It is not that God is no longer able to set the captives free and to open the blinded eyes. To heal and deliver tormented minds. It is this. We need him once again to pour out his glorious power and show his presence once more. And the Holy Spirit challenged me that we had better get our Sell straight real fast. In one of the Peanuts comic strips, Sally was struggling with a memory verse for Sunday school. She was absorbed in her thoughts and trying to figure it out. When she remembered and it came in her mind, maybe it's something in the book of reevaluation. Now we know she was talking about revelation. But I think it would be good for us to go to the book of reevaluation. That we might reevaluate ourselves and understand that we belong to him. Our lives belong to him. In him we live and move and have our being. This hour in church history, would anybody agree with me that none of us have all the answers? All these things that we are going through, depression on the rise, suicide on the rise, pornography on the rise, kill, for COVID, there is no cure. We need the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that the church of Jesus Christ is the answer. But can I say something that is very, very important? Church, may we be reminded today that we're not wise enough. We're not gifted enough. We're not strong enough. But Jesus made us a promise. He said, when I leave this place, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you a helper. And he will lead and he will guide you into all truth. And so we need the Holy Spirit, number one, because the landscape of the body of Christ is littered with dry bones. Secondly, the spirit of deceit is running rampant in the body of Christ. Therefore, we need the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, because we need a revival in the body of Christ, lest we die. Listen now. There is a saying that is of old that someone has one foot in the grave and one out. I believe that we got a whole foot and half a foot in the spiritual grave in the church in America. Listen to me now. We are standing on the very edge of spiritual demise if God does not revive us. If we don't cry out and allow God to revive us, when I gave people that book, some of my fellow pastors, we will not be silent. I gave them that book and one, they had one common comment. They said the book was good, but it didn't give any solutions. And so I thought about that for a minute. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, there is no man written book that can give us solutions for what we are in. They can help us understand why we're in the mess that we are in. But the answer to the dilemma is very clear. It is in the word of God. Would you say with me, we need a revival. Watch this now. Isaiah 63 and 10 says, Isaiah 63 and 10 says, Yet they rebelled and they grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and he became their enemy and he himself fought against them. I'm going to say something that will be hard for us to swallow today because we're big time on grace and we're big time on the New Testament. But I believe that this is true concerning the church of Jesus Christ today as a whole, that the Holy Spirit is in a sense fighting against us. He is resisting us because of our rebellion. We have rebelled against his word. We have rebelled against his laws. We have rebelled against him in so many ways because we have bowed to bell. Everybody listen to me very closely. I'm not talking about the world I am talking to us the body of Christ Ephesians 4 30 and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were so you were seated for the day of redemption he is grieved but I believe there is hope if we will embrace Jeremiah 33 2 through 3 this is what the Lord says 
He who made the earth, the Lord will, who formed it and established it. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you, tell you great things and unsearchable things that you do not know. I believe with all the bad news I just gave you in the beginning, I believe that in 2022, if we will humble ourselves and we will seek him, we will find him and he will do for us things that have never been done before. But the first thing we have got to do, we must get back to the word of God. Listen now. We got to stop compromising the word if we're going to see the glory. Let me tell you the good news. There have been bleak spiritual times before in this nation. Yet when God's people truly humbled themselves, great revival came. And I believe he wants to and he will do it again. But now we have a problem here. Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Everybody say there is no other way. Stop right there now. See, we are not having the effect as witnesses of Christ in a time when it is needed most. And I believe it is so because we lack the power we once knew in our lives and in our ministries. And that is because the landscape of the body of Christ is littered with dry bones. And that is because in a lot of cases the spirit of deceit is running rampant in the body of Christ. And something has got to change. I was reading a message from Dr. Tony Evans. It was titled, Why We Need Revival. Listen to what he said. Too often Christians want to enjoy the blessings of God's favor while overlooking or choosing not to deal with the root problem that is keeping God's blessings from flowing into our lives. And what he is saying, I believe, applies to individual lives and the church as a whole. He said, but ignoring the real issue is like taking painkillers when you have an infected tooth. He tells of a situation he faced on a vacation one time when he and his wife were on a cruise ship together. He was planning on having a great time when all of a sudden he started to experience pain in his tooth just as they got settled on board the ship. And he tried to ignore the pain for a couple of days, but it kept getting worse. He finally went to the clinic on the ship and they gave him some pain medications. But they didn't work the pain. They didn't stop the pain from coming. The pain just increased day by day. So he called his dentist and his dentist described his, described his symptoms to his dentist. And the dentist told him that he believed the problem was not just a toothache, but an infection. He also told him that since he was treating the wrong problem, dealing with the pain, he wasn't going to get any better until he got some antibiotics to treat the infection. He followed his advice and he began to feel better. Dr. Evans said, my situation illustrates how easy it is for us Christians to do the same thing spiritually. We know there's a problem because we feel the pain inside. But we only treat the symptoms and we leave the real problem unresolved. Church, in the body of Christ, we have been treating the symptoms. We've started new programs, new styles of worship, new formats. We're more activated. We've got more activities. We are doing more Zooming. We are more, 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 more conferences, better preaching styles. The new thing are shorter sermons, less words, and more praise and worship, which most of the time is a little praise and worship. Some of these things aren't bad, and they grew some, some of our churches, but they didn't fix the real problem. We lack power. And I love something that Rick Warren said, and I don't have the perfect quotation, but he said something to this effect. A church can be big and flabby or small and powerful. See, the size of a church doesn't matter. It matters whose presence is filling the church. Listen, we want, Dr. Evans says, we want to go to church and pop a few sermons or music pills and then leave feeling better. And these things certainly have their place. But if our real need is revival from the Lord, then relying on other things to cure our spiritual pains and defeats will never work. We can't fix this revival need with more good deeds or church programs. No. True revival has to be an inner work of the Lord and no one else. We can see that our society is in a state of spiritual decline, but what about the decline in spirituality among the followers of Christ? Listen to what he says next. We need to return to the Lord before we can ever hope to affect real change in society. Oh, God. Mm. Help me, Holy Spirit. (laughs) 
It is time that we, first of all, stop denying that we have an infection in the body of Christ. The infection is compromise and deceit. Tell somebody he's not trying to hurt us, he's trying to help us. Go ahead and say it. And we who do know and recognize the infection, it is time that we stop treating the symptom and got to the reality. And it is this, we have neglected the Holy Spirit and it is once again time that we welcome his presence. John 14, 16 through 17, Jesus said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be with you. Listen to me now. We have the Spirit within us. The comforter has come. Yet we have so little effect on what is happening in the world today. So go back with me to Ezekiel as we prepare to close today. In Ezekiel 37, where God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? We read it earlier, but here in essence is the summary of what happened. He said, Ezekiel prophesied to those bones and saying to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel said what God said to the bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put my breath in you and you will come to life. Then God said, then you will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel prophesied as God commanded in verse 7 says, And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone on bone, and I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit. I do not claim today to be a prophet and certainly not a modern day Ezekiel, but sometimes God prophesies through us. And I know when I hear from God and I know that I know that I know that if we will seek the Holy Spirit of the living God, God is going to do something in this earth in 2022 as we have never seen before. Our spiritual bones are going to come together. There is going to be unity in this body. There is going to be unity among the churches. Listen to me. As never before, as we pursue the Holy Spirit of the living God, but we must not settle. We must seek to have all of him and all of us. He have all of us. For if we don't, we will be as the bones Ezekiel prophesied too. They had tendons. They had flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. And I'm going to talk more in the future about how bones and tendons and skin can be very deceiving. That is what got us in the spiritual quagmire we are in presently. The church as a whole, we began to settle for looking good. There was no longer a pursuit of him in his presence. We became as those who looked so good on the outside while we were full of dead men's bones, the walking dead. There was no longer any urgency in our prayers, no longer any power in our worship. There was no longer any presence in our sanctuaries. Listen to these words. These are prophetic. In June 2019, a Christian publisher asked me to write an article on what I sense the Spirit saying. I responded with this. Now, follow me. Last Sunday, when I finished preaching and Pastor Lopez came on this platform, he said, I keep hearing the word urgency. Pay attention to what I'm about to read. As I pray and ask the Lord, what is the Spirit saying? I hear in my own spirit the word, one word, urgency. These are urgent times, contentious times, confusing times. These are times of great upheaval and great opportunity. These are intense times, difficult times, blessed times. The Spirit is saying urgency. Unfortunately, the message from all too many pulpits is not one of urgency. It is one of complacency, of comfort, of personal success. It is not a message designed to wake up a sleeping church, not a message designed to prepare for war or a message designed to challenge and stir. Instead, while moral confusion and spiritual deception rises, many of God's people are enjoying a peaceful slumber, lulled to sleep by voices of compromise that refuse to confront sin, that refuse to address the culture, 
that refuse to talk about divine judgment. It is time to wake up. The author says, I remind you, I wrote this in June of 2019, a time that almost seems blissful and calm when compared to the tumultuous months that have followed. Those are the words of Dr. Michael Brown from the book that I've been speaking from, Revival or We Die. Those words were written in 2019. The book was given to me in 2020, not by some old person as we deem them to be old, but by the generation that we think has no death. I'm talking about someone from the millennial generation, a young man in our church who desires to see his kingdom come and his will be done, handed me that book and I put it on my desk and did not touch it until God spoke to me this year. In fact, I encourage you to get that book. We're going to get it and put it in the bookstore so you're able to purchase it here. But I encourage you to get it and read it with spirit ears. In it are the words of Catherine Booth from 1829 to 1890 from her sermon, Aggressive Christianity. Listen to what she says. Opposition. It is a bad sign for Christianity of this day that provokes so little opposition. If there were no other evidence of it being wrong, I should know from that. When the church and the world can jog along together comfortably, you may be sure something is wrong. The world has not altered. Its spirit is exactly the same as it ever was. And if Christians were equally faithful and devoted to the Lord and separated from the world, living so that their lives were a reproof to all ungodliness, the world would hate them as much as it ever did. It is the church that has altered, not the world. Did you hear that? Did you hear when she said it? That was back in the late 1800s. Dr. Brown concludes with this, yet today in America, unless we push back against the sinful culture, the church and the world jog together quite comfortably. But it is not because we're changing the world, it's because the world is changing us. It is time to wake up. Why, church? Because a real and fair evaluation tells us there is something missing. And that something is someone, the precious power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. He says, kids are being exposed to pornography at eight years old. And hear this. There are reportedly more witches in America than millennial Presbyterians. Infanticide is being defended by elected officials. Divisions are ripping our nation apart at the seams. And let me pause and say something. We do have a demonic spirit running rampant called racism. And we must come against it wherever it rears its ugly head. But listen to me and get this in your spirit. Be very, very careful because race is being used for political gain in this country. And I am here to tell you today that though we have problems with race relations, race relations in this nation as a whole are more positive today than they have ever been in the history of this nation. If you do not believe it, I want you to watch Women of the Movement and see what racism did to Mamie Till Mobley's little boy Emmett. And I want you to take a stroll down history and see what it used to be like for a young black man to try and walk the streets of Mississippi. I know because my family comes from Mississippi. As a little child, I saw the difference in Chicago and Mississippi. Quit paying attention to the voice of this world and listen to the Holy Spirit. Dr. Brown says, we live in a day in which, in a figure of speech, America is burning. We should be burning too. May God awaken his people. May he set our hearts ablaze. May he share his pain with us. The spirit is saying, urgency. Does anybody else hear it as well? I do. Let me say it one more time. We will either burn for God or be burned by Satan's deceit. And I believe that things are about to change. Well, I believe this message is a message for the body of Christ. Not because it's from me, but from God. Because I'm not the only one preaching this. But I believe it applies directly to Eagle Heights Cathedral and to our family. I'm going to close with this. This house was prophesied over before I was in my mother's womb. There have been spirits that have sought to kill this ministry before my family and I ever moved here. Some of you have heard this before, but you need to hear it again. There is a wonderful woman of God who is now moved with family to Connecticut to help with some of the family needs, who is in my mentor and my friend's church, Bishop Wiles. 
And Prudy is now in that church, but she keeps up with me and Lady Brenda. Prudy came to this church before I was in my mother's womb. Walked through the door when the platform was on that wall, and when she walked in, it was a predominantly white church. The pastor didn't even speak to her. She was hurt, but she heard the Holy Spirit say, stay here, because I got another plan. She stayed. I don't know the time period, but I believe it was years before anybody even recognized and, and, and gave her recognition that she was even in the body. Fast forward. 1998. For three years, Erie Family Worship Center had gone through hell. And this church that had a different name at the time was also going through hell. Remember what I said? You can go to, whole, to hell and back, but back is important. Because when you get back, you come back with some things you didn't have before you went in. And those things make you more powerful and more of a threat to the enemy when you come out. And so, 1998, Lady Brenda and I walk through the door. We walk this way. We sit down. The church is still in two services. And we're looking and we're going, why? Why? There's about 75 people in one and 50 in another. And as we sit, Prudy is in the choir loft. What I found out was that the moment Lady Brenda and I docked that door and she saw me, she fainted and she passed out. Let me tell you why. See, some of you were here. You know it happened. Let me tell you why. Because Prudy saw me before I was in my mother's womb. I looked exactly like the man God had shown her. And when I walked into the room, she said, now I know why God said stay. Fast forward. The devil has been trying to kill this ministry before we came. Since we've been here. 2010, pain. And God kept telling us as a church, wake up. We are a comfortable sleeping church. Some tried to kill us. Some thought we were dead. But I humbly believe today that the winds of the Holy Ghost are blowing. I humbly believe today that they are blowing on this house. There is something breathing in the atmosphere and not everybody can sense it. And if you don't sense it, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Because then God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds. Breathe into those slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying to Eagle Heights. Don't sit there and look at me like I ain't saying nothing. He says, breathe. If we will welcome him into this house. Verse 13. Then you my people will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know. That I the Lord. Not James Collins have spoken I have done it declares the Lord Jessica not because you're my daughter but thank you for taking us back to some of those choruses we considered old getting ready to rap now 
We need the Holy Spirit to anoint us so that we might glorify Jesus. And I'm going to finish this point next week. We don't want miracles for the sake of miracles. We want miracles so that Jesus might be glorified. We don't want healings and deliverances for the sake of such, but that Jesus might be glorified. Hebrews 12, 14. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. I believe this is present and future tense. Without holiness in the present, we cannot see his glory. Washington Irving gave us the cautionary tale called Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle is an amiable farmer who is tired of his wife's nagging. He wanders into the Catskill Mountains. Tell somebody or tell yourself, don't get tired of Bishop's nagging. He wanders into the Catskill Mountains where he comes up on a group of dwarfs playing nine pins. Rip accepts this offer, their offer, to drink a liquor. We call liquor spirits. And he promptly falls asleep. When he awakens 20 years later, he is an old man with a long white beard. The dwarfs are nowhere in sight. When Rip returns, he finds everything has changed. His wife is dead. His children are grown. They are wild with no direction. Since the father would not listen to the mother, there was no father there to guide them. He got tired. He just shrugged his shoulders, shook his head, cast his eyes up, and would say nothing. Finally, after years and years, he'd had enough. So he ran to what he thought would be a better life. Seduced by his newfound world, he drank of that world. Jessica, worship team, musicians, I want you to come now. Pastor Lopez and you that are watching on the stream, don't check out right now. And then you'll come, Pastor Lopez, shortly. And that world, he drank from it. It lulled him to sleep. And when he finally awakened 20 years later, everything he lived for and everything he truly loved was dead or no longer in his life. His wife is dead. His children are gone. His house is in decay. The roof has fallen in. Windows shattered. Doors off the hinges. The thing that merely resembles what he knew was a half-starved dog that looks like a wolf that's sulking about. Rip's story was soon told for the whole 20 years had been but as one night to him. Here's the sad, sad truth. Rip Van Winkle lost everything because of one drink with a world he was not familiar with. Lulled to sleep. When he finally awoke, All was lost. Again, alcohol, we call them spirits. God forgive us, because the church as a whole has been drinking of the spirits of the world. It's time to wake up. And once again, drink of the Holy Spirit. Can you hear the Spirit say urgency? You are in the world but not of the world. God does not want to rob you of the joy of life. I'm going to prove it to you next week. How God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be blessed. He wants to do great and mighty things in your life. God wants to bless you, spirit, soul, and body. But we have got to get ourselves straight. We have got 
to begin to live as we were created. <laughs> Spirit, then soul, then body. Does anybody else know that we need a touch of his presence? We need to drink of the Spirit once again. Go ahead and lead us. If you want it, why don't you stand where you are and lift your hands and worship. I just want to touch up your presence. great hope in my heart there is a rejoicing in my heart the Holy Spirit is leading me to lead us to deal with the hard stuff so the Holy Spirit can come in and freely move two things and then Pastor Lopez come the Lord spoke to me and I was sharing with the, the men in our meeting and with Lady Brenda that 
I felt like God said, and then I saw, and I found a prophetic letter later that pro prophesied about COVID coming years ago. And I said to them, the Lord spoke into my spirit that the cure for COVID is the church is going to have to pray it away. We're going to have to pray it away. The second thing I want to tell you is this. I was working out last night and after my workout, sat down and ate dinner, fasting one meal a day, and drank some water with my meal, couldn't finish my meal, got upstairs, have to take medication, which is why I do one meal a day, believe in God for healing one day. And I took some milk upstairs and was drinking the milk. Here's the problem. At about 2 o'clock in the morning, I was overwhelmed with thirst. But I was so tired that I just put up with the thirst. And the problem was I never did really get a good night's sleep now. I get up this morning, I run downstairs, not to the coffee pot, but to grab a bottle of water and guzzle. And God said to me, my people have been too lazy, though they're thirsty, to do what it takes to quench that thirst. He said, it is time that they do what you did physically and do it spiritually. Run to the water and drink. Because water is always symbolic of the Holy Spirit. There are many symbols of the Holy Spirit, but water is one of those symbols. And Jesus said that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Father, now we lay our hearts before you. Our ways are not perfect, but our hearts are perfect in that we are after you. We're after your heart, your will. So draw us nearer to that place. Lead us to the place where your heart is, where the river overflows. Come and wash us and purify us and then fill us. For Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The world needs to be flooded by the living water that flows out of us. So today, anew and afresh, revive us, O oh Lord. Cleanse us from our impurities and make us holy. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen and amen. Give God glory. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a wind blowing. Hallelujah. And when wind blows, it brings intensity. But it's good stuff. It's good intensity. If it wasn't God who was with us, where would we be, church? Amen. Can you put your hands together and just give him glory? Where would we be? My God. It's time to worship God with his tie and our offerings. Amen. Our special offering is for the upkeep of God's house. And this is the fund that we call the Joe's chest. And for those who don't know it, the fund is used for repairs, is used for maintenance of the building, from building projects all the way to snow plowing. But this is the fund that we use. So please consider giving generously to cover the rising courses of materials today and of services. And, and, and let me just say, let me put a plug in keep our contractor in prayer the contractor that was going to start with the bathrooms he's recovering right now he's going to be okay but just keep him in prayer amen praise god and this is the month uh, of january where we celebrate the sanctity of human life and so every year we support your options medical center they're in revere and they're one of few in its kind uh, where they counsel and they give options that are presented to people as opposed to having an abortion. 
And so please pray for your Options Medical Center and please support. We support them every year. We've put a basket here. Give freely as God. Uh, uh, right after the service, just bring it and give freely as God would, would put it in your heart. And if you're listening online, include it in your giving for uh, uh, your Options Medical Center for the sanctity of life. As we prepare to, to give, let me encourage you with a thought. Here's a thought. It's not hard to worship God without treasure. It really isn't. When we understand that our treasure comes from him. Money may come through a job. It may come through a business. But it all comes from him. Money may come through, again, a job, a business. It might be any kind of entity. But at the end of the day, these entities where our finances come through, they're nothing more than conduits. The source of all our provisions is from God. When this truth takes a hold of the heart, church, we can freely worship God without treasure because we're not giving anything that he hasn't already provided. There are people that get challenged when it comes to trusting God in their giving because sometimes it just seems easier to trust what we see, what we hold, or what we have than to believe God at his word. But every time we give him the tie and the offering, in his presence, in God's presence, it's an act of worship. It's an act of faith, and it's an act of obedience. I also found that giving has the power to move mountains. I find that it has the power to bring deliverance. I'm just speaking about my own life. When we give, it opens up doors. It positions us. It has the power to bring healing. It breaks curses. It opens doors. It ministers in other people's lives. God still declares, even today, Test me now and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. And then he says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. If you believe that, can you say amen? Praise God. Just hold that envelope. Father, it's a seed. The tie is yours. We don't compromise. We don't play with that. But the seed, the offering is free giving. And so, Father... We give generously because you said that whoever gives generously or bountifully, they shall receive that way. So, Father, we lay it, dear God, right now into the soil of your kingdom. And, Father God, would you make it grow? Would you multiply it? Father God, so that we can do what you called us to do. And we're careful to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Jehovah John. You're my provider, Jehovah DC, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah shine.
I want to challenge you this week. I just felt like God dropped it in my spirit. As you pray, spend more time worshiping than asking. Just worship the King of glory. Just love on the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And watch God love back on you. Now may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Eagle Heights Cathedral, it's been a pleasure and joy to worship with you once again. I want to remind you that you can join us in person for one of three services at 8.30 a.m., 10.15 a.m., and 12 p.m. For more information, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram or visit our website, ehconline.org. If you'd like to speak to someone in person, you can call us Tuesday through Friday at 781-284-0670. We look forward to seeing you again soon.